Hawkins. But right now, I want to welcome to the program from BigGovernment.com, Dr. A.W.R. Hawkins. And how you doing tonight, Dr. Hawkins? Great talking to you again, sir. Oh, Cam, I'm doing great. Good to be with you. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, every day, it seems, brings new developments in the uh, Fast and Furious scandal. And not just, not just minor developments. I, I mean, really, over the past week, there have been some major stories developing, including, uh, I mean, frankly, the, the, the big news today that uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Phoenix, Arizona, is no longer going to be prosecuting the Fast and Furious cases. They've been moved to other jurisdictions. I, I, I think, um, without a doubt, it's because of uh, the, the credibility hit that the U.S. Attorney's Office in Arizona has taken. Uh, news that uh, there may have been a sort of a subset of Fast and Furious, a grenade-walking program, uh, and Fast and Furious-style tactics allegedly being used in America's heartland in Indiana as well. Uh, yes, Kim. I mean, this story, as you say, the more you know about it, the crazier it gets. And every day, when you think it can get no crazier, it gets a little crazier. You're, the, the grenades being supplied to the cartel, allegedly, uh, the gun sales in Indiana, it's all nuts. Uh, I do believe with you, I heard you before I came on, I do believe that moving these cases out of Arizona is a great deal. Uh, I know that Congressman Issa thinks it's a great deal, but I do believe, as you say, that it's reflected in the fact police office here is not trustworthy. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, it, from the from the beginning, uh, this administration has tried to make it seem like this was just some sort of low-level operation dreamt up in the ATF uh, office in Phoenix, Arizona, and that's sort of where it stayed. They've been desperate to try to keep the damage contained to ATF, although last week we saw the U.S. Attorney for Arizona, Dennis Burke, he was allowed to resign with a lot of accolades and praise. Uh, his deputy, Emory Hurley, was transferred from the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office in Phoenix uh, back to Washington, D.C., into the Civil Division, out of the Criminal Division. And you write about this at uh, BigGovernment.com. Uh, you, you know, one of the things that, uh, again, it's easy to overlook now because of all of these new developments, uh, Dennis Burke, the, the former U.S. Attorney for Arizona, apparently tried to cover up the connection between the death of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry and Operation Fast and Furious. Oh, exactly, Cam. And I know I heard you use the word apparently, and I say allegedly, mm -hmm. but Congressman Issa is on record saying that uh, Dennis Burke changed his story, that once he was with the Congressional Committee, once he was giving that type of testimony under earth, under oath, excuse me, whereas beforehand he didn't tie uh, Border Agent Terry's death to Fast and Furious. Once he was under oath, he did tie it to Fast and Furious, and it's beyond a little bit fishy. Uh, yeah, it, it is beyond fishy. You know, again, the, the um, I guess there was an email uh, from uh, Mr. Burke just hours after uh, Agent Terry's death in which he said he didn't want this connection uh, uh, known because it would, quote, divulge the current case, the current case being Fast and Furious, which, you know, takes me to, to something that I, I said over the weekend when I was sitting in on uh, the David Webb show, Dr. Hawkins. I said, we keep seeing all of these news reports describe this as a botched investigation or an investigation that went awry. It worked exactly as they planned, with one exception. We found out about it. That's what was botched. That's what was that. That's what went awry. Is that the public became aware of Fast and Furious? Other than that, I don't think uh, you know you would have uh, up until that point. You wouldn't have found anybody in the Obama administration uh, critical. It seems of Fast and Furious. Oh no, and I agree with you. And I'll I'll tell you someone a good go-to man. I, I've heard him on your show, Congressman Paul Gosar. Oh yeah, out of Arizona. He's made the point in an interview I did with him. He made the point to me, the ATF, the DOJ, they didn't even tell Mexican officials about this activity. And so it's clear they had their own little agenda. They had something they wanted to accomplish with this other than what they said they wanted to accomplish. I continue to contend that what they wanted to do was, was cause chaos so they could pass more gun control. But whether we agree on that or not, mm -hmm. it's just it's inarguable that they were trying to cause something other than what they say they were trying to cause. Uh, yeah, 
And, and again, you just it's just a matter of common sense. Based on everything we know about it, how this operation was, was working, uh, there was no way, Dr. Hawkins, that the administration could have achieved its stated objectives of going after the, the heads of the snake, quote-unquote. Because in order to do that, you would have had to involve Mexican law enforcement because our ATF doesn't have the authority to make arrests in Mexico, and that's where, the, that's where we all knew, or they all knew, these guns were going. So unless and until you involve Mexican law enforcement, you're not going to be able to, uh, to, to, to get those big takedowns that supposedly uh, were the goal of Fast and Furious. Now, if you can't actually achieve your objectives then it's, you know, come on, we're, we're going to ask, all right, well, what was the real objective? Because your stated one doesn't make any sense. Oh, that's exactly right. Now, I'll, and I'll tell you what else. If you take everything you mentioned when we started our segment, you take the hand grenades in Arizona, you take uh, the sales in Indiana, you take the sales, the gun walking they're looking at in Tampa, possibly the Honduran cartels. You look at all of those things together, it seems like an attempt to cause chaos on a massive scale. That's what I can't get away from. Mm-hmm. And, and as far as I'm concerned, they succeeded there to a degree. But as you say, what ruined it for them, we found out about it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, the, the other question that keeps coming up, uh, in my mind anyway, uh, Dr. Hawkins, is, you know, it looks like this, uh, this grenade case involved the Sinaloa cartel. It looks like Fast and Furious itself involved uh, getting guns to the Sinaloa cartel, which is not the only cartel operating in Mexico. One of the two biggest, the other, the Zeta cartel, run by uh, former Mexican uh, special forces. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know how much of the, uh, the Mexican media you read, but there is, you know, there's, there's a lot of rumors and theories floating around about President Calderon's action and how he's fighting the cartels. And one of the common theories down in Mexico is that Calderon is, in essence, picking sides, uh, that he wants to get rid of the Zetas, he wants to take them out, he wants to focus on them uh, because they are seen as uh, more violent, more barbaric. The Sinaloa cartel is sort of the old school, we know how to deal with them, we can work with them. If we can get rid of the Zetas, so the theory goes, uh, then we can reach some sort of accord with the Sinaloa cartel and then the, uh, the cartel violence will stop. And so you actually have, you know, I, I think questions that are being raised are we trying to help the Sinaloa cartel? Well, I mean, and at times it looks like we're working hand in hand with someone down there. Uh, I, I don't know enough to speak specifically to it, except to say that when I do read uh, literature or, or Mexican reports, some of which you mentioned, mm-hmm. uh, it looks like we're working, as you say, with one side rather than the other. But the big problem in all this, we go back to the foundational points. We have an, a, a dead American, at least one, who is a federal agent. We have, I don't know how many laws broken. And as you said at the beginning of our segment, uh, Attorney Burke is allowed to resign and receive accolades at his resignation. Uh, there's a good chance that he should have been told of a court date at his, at his resignation. Uh, yeah, absolutely right. So you, you also had a piece uh, a couple of days ago at Human Events uh, talking about these the, the fall guys, uh, at least the attempted fall guys, acting ATF director uh, Ken Melson, who's been moved to a uh, consultancy position within uh, DOJ, uh, Bill McMahon, Bill Newell, they've both been moved to uh, ATF headquarters in D.C., and then, of course, Dennis Burke and uh, Emory Hurley uh, from the U.S. Attorney's Office. Burke allowed to resign. Hurley sent back to DOJ in the uh, Civil Division. Uh, and, and, and now three individuals within the White House, within the National Security Council, Kevin O'Reilly, um, uh, Dan Restrepo, the senior Latin American advisor in the National Security Council, and Greg uh, Gajanis, another White House national security official, also kept in the loop. And, and, and your point is no one or two or even three fall guys uh, is going to suffice to put an end to the investigation or to answer all of the questions surrounding Fast and Furious. Exactly right, Cam. I'll go to the point you made early. earlier. Let's think of names like uh, G. Gordon Liddy or Chuck Colson, names that we know in our culture today. These are all men who served time or faced prosecution in Watergate and had to have their names cleared and, and so on and so on. We have things here that are far worse than that, 
And we have men in the White House who have communications about what's going on. If Richard Nixon were president right now, they would be staying overnight tonight, Pelosi with a grin on her face, simply to start impeachment proceedings. Just on what we know now, I don't doubt that if Richard Nixon were in office. Yeah. So we can't let ourselves be satisfied with the fact that three people have either resigned or been reassigned or whatever. We we have to push on here. A- a- absolutely. Yeah, look, by the, by the hour, it is becoming more and more evident uh, that the administration desperately wants to talk about anything other than Fast and Furious. That you know, and, and I got to tell you, Doctor Hawkins, that's the the other thing that really, that really bothers me. Uh, th- this is a guy who came into office and, and said this is going to be the most uh, honest and transparent administration in history, uh, and yet all of the actions of this administration, whether it's the White House, whether it's the Justice Department regarding Fast and Furious, has been to obstruct, to deny investigators the uh, documents or information that have been requested, uh, to pretend and uh, uh, pro- proclaim that there was no connection between the death of Brian Terry and Operation Fast and Furious, and then say, well, you know, the guns were found there, but there's no evidence that the uh, guns were used in Agent Terry's death. And then the FBI comes out and says, actually, that's not quite true. Uh, it's just that we can't determine whether or not uh, these were uh, one of these guns was the, uh, the murder weapon because of the uh, damage that was done to the bullet. I mean, this administration has not been honest with the American people about this, which is one of the reasons why uh, you had Wayne LaPierre last week call for a special prosecutor, uh, because clearly this internal investigation that the Obama administration is doing and Justice Department's uh, Office of Inspector General is doing, they're not going to, I I don't think they're going to level with the American people, do you? Oh, no, they're not capable of policing themselves. I believe Mr. LaPierre is 100 percent correct. Uh, They can't police themselves because in order to police yourself, you have to have the ability to understand and enforce law. And they obviously have no understanding or no desire to enforce law because who knows how many they broke to sell 2,500 weapons to people who they knew were going to pass those weapons to criminals. And they can't be trusted. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Uh, you know, and I don't know if you saw this tweet by a Representative Iser earlier tonight, but uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. He he uh, linked to that New York Times story on Friday that referred to those White House emails, the emails to the three officials that uh, you talk about in your Human Events column. Uh, and then he asked the question, is there more to this story? Now, if the chairman of the House Oversight Committee is asking that question, I've got to think, Dr. Hawkins, that he knows the answer. And this may be a little well, foreshadowing by uh, Representative Issa. Well, I do, too, and, and, and I want to bring it back to Holder. When, when ISA first began his hearings, uh, uh, Congressman ISA came out and said he did not believe Holder had been honest, or he may have said had not been forthright, but he didn't believe the testimony Holder was giving. So you have that doubt in Congressman ISA's mind, and then by the day we find out more and more people were, were on the end, were on the inside in this deal. And we would be crazy to do anything other than support Congressman Issa right now. I hope he ramps it up. I hope the investigation goes full steam and and he blows the doors off this thing. Yeah, well, I do, too. Uh, And we will, you know, we'll we'll all be tuning in, I guess, for the uh, next House Oversight uh, hearing, which should be in the uh, next couple of weeks. I mean, Congress is going to be back in session beginning on uh, Wednesday afternoon and uh, I think before the end of September, we are likely to see another House Oversight uh, and Government Reform Committee hearing on Fast and Furious, one of several, I think, before the end of the year. And, you know, the revelations, uh, they're the things that are coming now fast and furious. Uh, exactly right. Hey, Dr. Hawkins, thank you again so much, sir, for coming on the program. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Cam, I always enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. A.W.R. Hawkins joining us from uh, BigGovernment.com. HumanEvents.com, PajamasMedia, RedCountry.com, and more.